Behind me, in what's called a box trap behind this barn, is a bobcat, which conservation workers are here today to tag to track the effects of global warming on bobcats and lynxes. And the cat that we have here today, these traps we check every single day, and this one um, was found this morning. Um, it's the biggest cat that we've had, so it's kind of exciting. It's a bobcat. There's been no um, studies of lynx or bobcat, to my knowledge, in southern British Columbia before, and none that have involved radio collaring cats to see where they're moving through the landscape and how they're using their habitat. One of the main things for me is looking at the biotic interactions between lynx and bobcats as uh, temperatures rise and snowfall uh, decreases, bobcats have been seen to go further north and they are overlapping with bobcat or lynx in ways that uh, we haven't seen before and now is a good time to take a look to see if they're having a negative impact on them. So we're using a collar that uh, takes a GPS point every hour so we know exactly where that cat was every hour. They have accelerometers on them which will let us know how much time they spend hunting, how much time they spend eating, how much time they spend hiding, how much time they spend sleeping. Basically what we'd ask is that if people encounter a trap they should just leave it alone. That it's actually illegal to interfere with those traps and while you think it might be doing something good, in this case it's uh, really um, um, interfering with uh, a good research project that will help manage wildlife better in future for sure. For Castanet News outside of OK Falls, I'm Chelsea Powery. Get Castanet's mobile app, available now on iTunes and Google Play.